Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. This week we're going to take a look at a Tesla Model 3 from Hertz. It's got about 4,000 kilometers on it. Uh, first we'll go for a quick tour through the car. And I'll give you a quick start, just to overview all the controls, and then we'll take it for a drive. Uh, just a quick reminder, if you want to see more of these videos, go ahead and click on the subscribe. And let's take a look at the Model 3. In the front, we've got the uh, Tesla charging cables, if you're charging anywhere other than a supercharger. And a little bit of storage space. Uh, if you're renting one of these, I would highly recommend you check, make sure that all the cables are there, just so you don't have any uh, surprise charges when you return. Lots of room in the back seat. And if you're looking for some USB chargers, there's two right here, USB-C. And the seats fold down, giving you access into the trunk. And let's take a look at the trunk. Power operated to open. Fairly high trunk, lots of room, and there's a little bit of storage underneath. Actually, it is fairly deep down there. And again, the seats fold down. If you need to uh, carry something a little bit larger, deep pocket in there. And to close it, it's power operated as well. You just press the button there. And let's take a quick look at the interior. It takes a little bit Getting used to not having the speedometer directly in front of you. So you got the gear shifter on the right. You can also use that for the uh, autopilot. And you got your wipers, turn signal on the left. Uh, there's the button to get in and out. Release the door, power windows down here. And a uh, fairly decent stereo system in here. You've got speakers here, here, and on the floor. I'll go into this a little bit later, but here's the touch screen. And it's really handy too. Wireless charging for two phones right down here. Uh, some more storage in here. And if you're looking for USB-C charging in the front, uh, I'm not sure if you can see it here, but there's two, yeah, there they are. Two chargers kind of hidden down there. Uh, a couple cup holders and then uh, lots of storage in the middle here. Show you the guys the glove box, but uh, for some reason on this first rental, it's locked with a pin code, so I can't get into the glove box. Which is probably why the airbag sign is still out there, and nobody's been able to remove it. And you've got lights up here. I kind of like the. Uh, actually, I'll show you over here. I kind of like these mirrors because they're magnetic. So you just pull it down, and then the light comes on. And it just goes up. It's magnetic. Last roof is really nice, tinted, so not really a problem with too much heat coming in. Uh, 
Okay, we're at 15% charge, and we just pulled into a supercharger in Orangeville, Ontario here. That's capable of 250 kilowatt hours, high speed charging. So I'm just going to tap on the uh, car icon here, bring up the main menu, and we'll go into charging. And I'm going to click on open charge port. And let's step outside. And let's take a look at the charging here. So it is, it was at 15% and it's charging up to 18% already, 65 cents. Can we see, oh, we can see the speed over here. Let me just zoom in and see if you guys can see that here. 170 kilowatt, 1200 kilometers an hour. And charge level is set to 80%. We can probably bump that up. So we're 170 kilowatt, we can keep an eye on this here, see if it gets up to the 250 or not. And we're already at 19%. All right. I'll let it charge for a little bit and we'll pick things up. All right, we're almost up to 40% here. Charging speed is starting to slow down a little bit. It's down 137 kilowatt hours. Speed is still roughly just under 1,000 kilometers an hour. We've got about 15 kilowatt. Current charging session, $6, and we're at 40%. All right, we just hit 80%. Time flew by. 80% here. Charging speed is uh, about 60 kilowatt hours, 430 kilometers an hour. Added uh, 39 kilowatt hours, 80%. If we want to go up to 87%, it would be another four minutes. So let's go ahead. Uh, actually, we're at uh, $18.78 Canadian. It's probably uh, about $13 US or so. But let's go ahead and stop charging. And we'll go outside and disconnect. the button there to release. Yeah, just lock it back in place. Oh, look at that, it even closed the door. So there you go, actually, let me pop in back into the car outside of the wind. And I just wanted to mention that Hertz, uh, if you want to bring it back fairly empty, Hertz will charge you, uh, there's an option for prepaying the, uh, I guess the electricity in this case, uh, $35. And then you can bring it back as long as it's above 10%. So here we added, uh, we went from about 14, 15% all the way up to 80%. And it cost us under $20. So definitely cheaper if you charge it up yourself. The only thing is if you charge it up yourself, you got to bring it back roughly around 80% as far as I can tell. Just to avoid any uh, sort of fees. There's uh, When you get your contract, there's about two pages that just go into all the details. So 
I'd probably suggest if you don't mind filling up yourself, just bring it back 80% and um, take a look at the uh, charges once Hertz sends me the receipt. I'm curious if there's any admin fees, but uh, it sounds like there isn't, but I guess we'll find out soon enough. All right, let's go for a drive to start the Tesla. Hertz gives you the credit card key. You just put it down by the cup holders, step on the brake, and then the car starts up. And once the car starts up, you just pull the lever down, shift it into drive, and away you go. Step on the accelerator. And you tell it's fairly quiet. Now turn right onto King Vaughn Road. sunny day. It's uh, early spring and just north of the airport in Toronto. Out on some of the country roads here. It's about 11 degrees Celsius. So still pretty windy. pretty good with the batteries and the center of gravity down pretty low through the corners handles really nice and here I'm not even touching the brakes that's just the reach in kicking in slowing the car down range is about 150 kilometers, it's just over 100 miles, and battery is about 35% uh, or so. There is a setting in the menus, I'll try and cover that. Uh, just in the upper right of the display you can see your range. Uh, you can also change that over to battery percentage instead. Your current speed over here. Uh, if you turn the uh, autopilot on, actually, let's just do that right now here. The auto steering. Just pull down twice on the gear shift lever. And then the uh, autopilot kicks in. You can adjust the cruise speed with the wheel on the blue the wheel on the right. Yeah, took me a while to figure that out. So you can use the wheel on the right of the steering wheel, go up and down, adjust your cruise speed. Tesla the steering right now, Andy on the highway. As far as I can tell, this doesn't have the lane change or the feature where you get on and off the uh, freeway. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, the autopilot works pretty good. Be handy for a long drive. Yeah, we can't really see it here because there's no other cars out on this road, but if there are other cars, see the curves kind of in and around uh, on the map here, which is pretty nice. And coming up, when we make a right-hand turn, you'll see the uh, rear view camera mirrors turn on. Give you a good uh, view of your blind spots. I'm just coming into another turn here. And not using the brakes, just letting off the accelerator.
27. This took me a little while to figure out to get your map back. You just swipe down. You have the menu items up. Uh, climate control, actually, you can swipe up from the bottom, get your climate control. Or you can just tap on the temperature there. Now turn right onto Highway 27. And turn to right here, you can see the uh, camera on the right hand uh, side kicking in. Uh, your telephone controls, radio controls, uh, cameras, Bluetooth settings, all on the bottom there. In two kilometers, your destination will be on the left. or either uh, move the steering wheel, it will turn off the uh, pilot assist or the uh, cruise control. And should be able to find a parking lot up here. We'll just park and uh, go through some of the controls there. Give you kind of a quick overview. Turn signals are on the left. It took me a little while to get the hang of the wipers, but to do the wipers, there's a push button on the turn signal lever. So you just push the push button in. Like so, it'll run the wipers once, and then it brings your controls up here. So you can adjust the speed of the wipers. Uh, do that again and bring the... Uh, and actually, if you hold the button in, or press the button in farther, it'll do the wiper wash. And what else we got for settings here? If we go into uh, controls, automatic headlights are on. You want to get in the glove box again there's a pin on it so i can't get into the glove box uh, you can fold the mirrors here here's your wiper settings also if you want to adjust the mirrors up and down left and right you can use the wheels on the steering wheel uh, this is just for recording incidents with the sentry and if you want to adjust the steering wheel you can move it up down in and out and this is the display brightness i believe at the bottom pedals and steering different modes in here charging settings uh, autopilot uh, if you're renting one of these and you want to try the auto steer it wasn't turned on in here so you have to be parked and then you can turn the auto steer on uh, you can set offset a couple settings with the blind spot camera speed limit warnings collision warnings lots of options in there your settings for the locks uh, right now it's set to lock when you walk away and settings for your lights, settings for the display. Uh, you can reset the trip computer. Navigation settings. Uh, safety settings. You can set up your dash cam clips. Uh, if you're taking the car in for service or you want to know what your tire pressures are. Owner's manual, car wash mode. Uh, notifications. Uh, if you want to know what the software version is, and I believe one of these, yeah, yeah, if you go into the software tab, it tells you the mileage on the car. So it's got 4,766 kilometers, about 3,000 miles. Upgrades doesn't do anything in this particular vehicle. Uh, if we swipe down on the menu, I don't know if there's any other uh, controls I want to talk about here. There's all your climate controls. Go 
to the radio, different stations you can set. All the cameras, so you can kind of switch in to different cameras, which is kind of handy. And uh, actually, I haven't had a chance to go through much of this, so here's the, uh, I guess, uh, the driving, consumption, calendar messages, arcade. Yeah, I haven't really had a chance to try any of this stuff here. Uh, browser. Spotify, Bluetooth, the radio we had up, tune in, just Apple Music, other things there. Uh, I think that's covered pretty much everything you need to know for the quick start. If I think of anything else, I'll add it into the video. All right, I just dropped off the uh, Tesla after a one-day rental. The uh, supercharging charges are not on the receipt yet, but I uh, just want to give you guys a heads up that um, on the return they were looking for that uh, charging kit I showed you in the front trunk. Uh, even though when uh, I checked out they didn't seem to know where it was. Um, in fact, the, uh, the person on the checkout uh, at the gate actually called the manager. <laughs> the manager said there were no charging uh, cables or anything with the car so uh, anyway long story short no matter who you rent from if you uh, rent a model 3 make sure uh, make sure you check uh, both the trunk and the front and pretty much check the whole car for the uh, charging cables and um, if the car doesn't have it make sure that's noted somewhere on your checkout just so you don't get charged for that on the return and I asked about the charges for the uh, supercharger uh, pretty much I just have to wait for an email for that so once uh, this is I may release publish this video before uh, before I get the charges for the supercharger charging uh, if I do what I'll do is I'll put the, the costs in the uh, comments below R I drove the car roughly 300 kilometers and put in roughly uh, charging costs were about roughly uh, $30 so that's about 200 miles or roughly uh, roughly about uh, $200 US sorry $20 US for about for about uh, 200 miles. Keep in mind, keep in mind uh, fuel costs are higher here in uh, Canada. And thanks everyone for watching. If you're thinking of renting a Tesla, or if you've already rented a Tesla, uh, please feel free to uh, drop a note in the comments below if you have any questions. Uh, by all means, uh, drop, drop some comments below. I've been thinking about doing a question and answers video as well, so that uh, would certainly help us out. And uh, that's it, yeah. If you uh, want to see more of these videos, give the video a quick like, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.